Everbank is proud to sponsor the How To Series by the Real Estate Board of New York. So there are two main reasons why there's barriers to innovation and technology in real estate. Um, and <clears throat> those two reasons are risk and then the deal economics and the finance and payback threshold concepts of the various buildings themselves. But the risk one is we can start with and is very simple and straightforward. In many cases, we have all sorts of interesting people come and explain to us why they have a great technology and a great idea and how it's going to save us a lot of money. And we're always very interested in saving money, and we, are, we look at every one of these ideas very closely. But the problem is we have to make a decision as to what the risks are versus the rewards. There were a number of, of companies and products out there that were selling um, uh, products that could go into chiller tubes and ensure that they uh, are more efficient or clean them as the chiller operates. So if we have to run that product through the chiller, the challenge is that the chiller is one of the most important pieces of equipment in the entire building because we have in many buildings and certainly at Rockefeller Center, a 365 day load for chilled water and chilled related products, condensed water, etc. And so we need to run that chiller all year long. If that chiller stops working, we have a big, big problem. So even though your product may actually drive large amounts of efficiency, if the risk there for us is that there's no air conditioning in the building for some period of time, that risk is just too great. It doesn't make a difference how great the payback is because tenants expect air conditioning 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So the challenge is for a lot of people who have great ideas and great technologies that the risk and the reward have to be lined up. The second thing we look at is, does it make sense given the economics of the building itself? So the risk barrier of deal economics is that we need to understand exactly what the deal economics of every building are, aka when we buy a building we have a plan, unsurprisingly. And that plan includes how long we're going to own the building and how much we want to spend on that building over the period of time that we're going to own it, how much money is going to come back in the form of rent, and what our ultimate plan for sale is. And so those deal economics are what drives the uh, economic profile of the building in terms of new technologies and how we want to uh, innovate in that building and what kind of capital uh, do we want to use uh, in the building to make improvements in energy efficiency and other things. For Tishman Spire, um, we don't have one uh, magical like threshold for what we decide is a good idea or a good technology. Every building stands on its own. Why is that? The reason every building stands on its own is because Tishman Spire is not a REIT. So what most companies in real, not most, but many companies in real estate and many familiar names traded on the stock exchange are REITs. REITs have a consolidated balance sheet and that means that they own, the, in most cases, all of their buildings. And what it generally means is that money can be moved within the organization from asset to asset. At Judgment Spire, which is a, a very common model uh, of how we are organized in real estate, um, we are not a REIT, uh, we're not a publicly traded company, and the money cannot move fungibly between the different buildings because each building is its own investment with its own set of investors. So we're often asked, what is the payback threshold of Tishman Spire? And for a lot of companies, they have one corporate payback threshold. They'll say, okay, well, you know, we will only invest money at this company if the economics show that the deal can be repaid within two and a half years, as an example. Um, but that requires, back to the earlier comment, that you have a consolidated balance sheet and that money can be moved freely from asset to asset. At Judgment Spire, and like many other real estate companies, that's not the case. Each building is its own investment. And so because each building is its own investment, is that it has its own deal economics and it has its own payback threshold. And so when you ask Judgment Spire, what's the payback threshold for investments, the answer is anywhere from zero to 10 years. So one of the challenges for companies that are interested in bringing innovation to real estate companies is understanding what companies would be open to that and also what assets would be appropriate for those investments. The challenge is that for a person that doesn't work inside of these companies, there's no way to know what the deal economics and payback thresholds of any one building over another are. So we might own two identical buildings that are both a million square feet, that are both square, that are both 50 stories tall, but yet they could have completely different payback thresholds and completely different criteria for making decisions on investments and capital. All companies and all buildings are interested in efficiency and we all want to be as efficient as possible. But in the scenario of the two identical buildings, there may be reasons financially why today is not the day to make that investment in this building, but it is the day to make that investment on the building across the street that is otherwise identical.